Hey there, it's Board Game Dave, and I just finished a solo game of Great Western Trail. Now, this has been in my top five games of all time for years and years, but uh, more recently, as a solo game, I'm finding that this solo variant is probably my favorite solo experience of all the board games I've ever played, which is really saying something. And there's so many reasons why after my 12th solo play of Great Western Trail just now, I'm still compelled and, and wanting to play this game solo. It's got so much replayability and it rewards different sort of strategies, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So today I just wanted to share some thoughts on why I think this solo mode is so good, so great, so compelling, so amazing. Uh, but first, I'm um, uh, maybe assuming that you know a little bit about the basic gist of Great Western Trail, but if you don't know anything about the game, basically, Great Western Trail is a rondelle game meets deck building game. So on your turn, you're going to take your cowboy meeple and move it to somewhere along the map. And you're going to stop at one of these action spaces like this. And you're going to be doing different things like buying better cows to go into your hand, which will give you more money and more points at the end of the game. You're going to be hiring new workers that are going to uh, help you maximize your actions. You're going to be getting or using your builders to build your own personal action spaces. Now, these are spaces only you can go to and they have some really powerful abilities. And you've also got these engineers that are going to help you move your train from Kansas City to New York, which allows you to make more lucrative deliveries. Now that probably sounds a little bit abstract if you don't know the game, but essentially you're working to build up your deck with better cows to deliver them to Kansas City, to ship them out, to get more money, repeat, rinse, recycle, repeat. <laughs> Until the job market's full, you finish the game, add up the points, whoever has the most points wins. So Hopefully you know a little bit more about the game than that already going into this little review. But anyways, let's talk about the solo mode and why I think it is so good. All right, so let's go over some basics. One, the solo game takes a little over an hour, which is a really very concise solo experience. Now, there is a bit of setup in this game that's unavoidable, but once you get going, it's just so easy breezy. The game's done within an hour, you're ready to score, and then you're done. And ideally, if you're like me, you can leave it set up on a board game table and then next day, you know, reset, play it again, go for it. There was a, a span of four days, I think we had some snow days, where I played this game five times in four days solo. I was just, I just wanted to dive into it so much. So one hour, easy breezy. Number two, uh, the AI opponent plays just like a real player and they manage this so well. Like it takes all the same actions I do. It's gonna take cows from the market. It's gonna hire employees from the, the uh, worker pool. It's going to make deliveries. It's gonna move its train and hop over mine. It's gonna put buildings out. It does everything just like a human opponent would do. And it's not beat your own score, right? Where, you know, many solo modes are just beat your own score. I am actively playing against this opponent and even better, my game doesn't change, right? Some solo modes require you to learn a whole new rule set for yourself. I just play my game like normal and then Sam takes his turns. Number three, the solo mode is super easy to manage. So on Sam, the AI's turn, you just flip a card and do what it says. That's it. It's so simple and I'm finding that this is my favorite kind of solo mode where the solo AI has a deck, you flip a card and you resolve it. And some of Sam's turns literally only take a few seconds. You move Sam in this case and unless his specialty is the carpenter, the builder, you don't do anything. So he just moves, turns over. It's so easy. Fourth, I really appreciate how the solo mode includes different meaningful and interesting difficulty levels. So basically there's the easy, medium, and hard difficulty modes. In easy, you're gonna remove some of the more challenging solo cards. On hard, you're gonna add one worker of each type. But more than that, you can further refine the difficulty level by deciding uh, where Sam gets to put his first delivery. So the closer to New York, the harder he is, the closer to Kansas City, the easier it is. So you've got this, again, meaningful, interesting solo difficulty thing you can kind of play around with because, you know, I think that various difficulty levels in a solo game is are almost essential because if it's too hard, it's not fun. If it's too easy, then that's not fun either, right? You want to have it where it's challenging, but not too hard. And if you're like me, I start easy, right? once I win that a few times, move up to medium, and the goal is to get really comfortable with that and move on to the hard mode. So I love that it's got those diff different difficulty levels that are really easy to implement. Fifth, I really like how Sam, the AI, 
organically develops throughout the course of the game, kind of like the human player. So there's a nice engine building element in this game where you've got better value cows that let you get more points or get more money as you get to Kansas City. You're gonna be putting out better and better buildings so you've got stronger actions. You're going to be unlocking more steps you can take per turn. So by default, your meeple can only move three spaces, but by the end, you can move up to five. So uh, in all those different ways, Sam also organically, right, like a human player, is gonna be developing to move more spaces per turn, to buy stronger buildings per turn, to buy better cows, right? So it's kind of uh, developing just like you are, and I love that because not all solo AIs do that. Sometimes they're just very static, right? Its turn is just gonna be the same all the way across the game, but this is really wonderful because Sam, just like me, we're ramping up throughout the course of the game. And by the end, it's moving, you know, five spaces and taking the huge, you know, best cows from the market and, and putting out a massive 11 point building, or I think there's a 10 point building out on the board. So anyway, it adapts, it improves, it matches you along the course of the game. I love that feeling. Sixth, the AI in this game has this dynamic strategy thing that doesn't always come into play, but I love when it does. So. The AI Sam is going to specialize in one of three different workers, right? Either the cowboys to get better cows, the builders to build better buildings, or the engineer, whoops, to move the train along, right? And it's going to start by specializing in one of those three things. But throughout the course of the game, if Sam can't get more workers of that specialty, right? And let's say at some point he gets more engineers than builders, he's going to switch specialties over to the engineer. So I love that Sam is able to pivot if things aren't going very well, he'll pivot to a whole different strategy. And I find that is so interesting and compelling. And again, very human of Sam to do that. Seventh and related to that, Sam's actions are somewhat uh, predictable slash outmaneuverable, but it's not at all scripted. So on a macro sense, I might be able to see what Sam's strategy is, let's say builders, right? And if I see more builders in the worker pool, right, I'm gonna snatch those up. So maybe he has to pivot or just not be able to, you know, totally go ham on builders and build some of his most expensive point getting buildings, right? So if you zoom out a little bit and focus on what Sam's trying to do, it is possible to kind of thwart his actions. But again, it's not scripted like, Concordia, for example, right, where you are determining what Sam's going to do. You've got this whole deck and you know the possibilities of what he's going to do, but you never know exactly what's going to come up. And that can lead to some really interesting tension and excitement as you're like, oh, as long as this one card doesn't come up, I'll be okay. And then, of course, he does that thing you wanted him not to do and he takes the thing you were going for or something like that. So um, it's it's somewhat predictable. It's not totally random, but it's got that good sense of random of it's going to be one of these actions and you don't know what it's going to be. And finally, I love that playing Great Western Trail solo gives you a chance to explore a whole bunch of different strategies. Now, that can be said about Great Western Trail in general, but even in the solo mode, I find that some games I go ham on the engineer. I did that uh, Thursday night when I played, I took my train all the way to space 39, I maxed it out and I won that game, right? This game, I don't even know what I was focusing on. I was doing more of the cowboy route, getting some of those high value cows, didn't end up working out for me. Uh, of course, you can work on the builder strategy, which I think is the most interesting and versatile game uh, strategy because the buildings are always different, but maybe you're going to uh, try to get this 20 point building out, right? And you wanna see how that goes. Uh, this game, I included the cemental cows. These are the orange cows. It's a little mini variant included in the second edition. So I was kind of playing with that and discovering how those work. So there's so many different avenues and strategies to try and I find that it keeps me coming back to the game because I'm like, oh, maybe next game I'll try the builder strategy or maybe I need to pivot or detour based on what Sam's doing because his strategy is always gonna be different as well. So it's very replayable, it's very rewarding, it lets you, you know, uh, again, this game is such a sandboxy sort of game where there's so many different strategies to try and I like that the solo mode gives me an excuse to try a whole bunch of different strategies out. And there you have it. Those are my eight reasons why I love the solo mode for Great Western Trail, why I think it is my number one solo game at the present moment. Now, for the longest time, for years, it was a feast for Odin. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't played that game solo in quite some time. I've been playing it on BGA a little bit recently, multiplayer, but 
you know, with the setup, with how big of a game it is, it just doesn't get to the table very often, whereas Great Western Trail is a little bit more uh, feasible, a little bit more manageable as far as, you know, the space and the, the number of fiddly bits to set up. Uh, also, Another game I was really, really into was Legacy of You. I made a whole video about it and why that was, for a time, my favorite solo game. I just wanted to keep playing this game. It was so quick. It was so breezy. It was great narrative. It was very, uh, you know, the campaign, the discovery was really interesting. But I think at this point, you know, now that I finished the Legacy of You campaign, we're back to Great Western Trail as my favorite solo game of all time. I I just, I love this game so much and I've been playing it constantly. I played it a whole bunch in January. I played it, uh, you know, earlier this week and I'm playing it again. So anyway, Great Western Trail, an absolutely amazing game. If you would like to hear about some of my more favorite uh, solo games, I'll have a video right here, although it's a little bit dated from 2022, but you can check that out. If you want to know about uh, Legacy of You, you can check this video out right here. But of course, you can go find all kinds of other videos of me talking about Oh, all kinds of other games. So <laughs> I'll leave you to it. In the meantime, everybody, have a wonderful week. Take care and happy gaming. Bye.